Hello again YouTube. Just going to give you an update on the progress I'm making uh, and also then I'm going to lead this into one of the first updates that I was talking about in the previous video I made. Uh, I'm going to talk you through one of the, the in the stages the updates that I've made to the pain cave and the first thing I'm going to talk about today is the um, Apple Mac Mini which isn't really a cycling thing but if you're into Zwift um, I promise you it's got some benefits. So firstly, I hope the sound is okay on this. I didn't bring a lab mic with me or anything, so I'm just relying on the Insta360. Progress I've made uh, in the first five weeks of uh, getting my mojo back. Yeah, I'm down just over 10 kilos, so very happy with that. Um, I am hitting the Watt bike every day. Uh, I'm keeping up the morning walks with Rosie and Hector. Um, and I'm mixing in a little bit more of road bike as well. So yeah, it's all good, all very positive. Uh, and like I say, like I said in the previous video, this is the most focused I've been in years and probably um, the most weight I've lost in well over a year, probably years in fact, probably a couple of years. So long may it continue. Anyway, I will shut up now then it'll be across to me in the pain cave talking about uh, the Apple Mac Mini and Zwift. So yes, welcome to the pain cave, the new and improved pain cave. Um, I must admit, since I kind of started getting back into focus and getting back into training, I have... Um, invested a bit in kit for here and I kind of I've built my dream Zwift setup um, and to some degree my dream pain cave setup so I consider myself very fortunate there um, until each month where I see the credit card bill but the one thing I wanted to talk about today was the thing that's currently running this so you will remember from previous um, pieces I've done, I've always been a real big fan of the Apple TV 4K as the primary device to run Zwift on. And I stand by that. That, in terms of convenience, in, con in terms of functionality, and in terms of experience, um, for the price, that's probably one of the best options I think that you can pick to run Zwift on. For me, I was looking for something just a little bit more functional, shall we say. One of the reasons for that is that I wanted to do a bit of live streaming. So I did experiment with, I bought an old i7 Mac Mini, um, which I screwed to the wall behind the TV there and gave that a go as kind of a streaming device. It had its issues. It was a little bit laggy, if I'm honest. I then kind of upgraded, well, I thought it was an upgrade to a MacBook, a 15 inch MacBook I bought off of eBay, uh, which, shall we say, had a few issues and wasn't quite as described. Um, that, again, when that was running, um, it was all right, but again, very laggy. And I kind of said to myself, what I wanted was a very clean setup where I could run Zwift on this big display and have a smaller display to run OBS on and see the chat and things like that. Now, the new Mac Minis, and I've gone for the uh, base model, eight gigabyte, uh, 256 gig SSD M2 Mac Mini. And this is the cheapest option. The one that I'm running here, out in the pain cave, I got from Argos, and I think I paid 649 for that. Now, I was so impressed with this when I got it, I bought another one to kind of replace my video editing rig, and I got that off of Amazon for 579. So, you know, that to me is a real deal. But one of the, the big things, one of the big advantages you get with these later Macs is they have a feature called Sidecar. Now what Sidecar does is allows you to take your iPad and turn it into a secondary display. And I must admit, I tried that and it seemed to work. 
The only thing was, I would say, that if you're planning like me to use um, a Mac Mini as a, as a streaming computer with your iPad as sidecar, I found with OBS in particular, it's a bit problematic. Um, what I would find is that everything would be running in the background as it should, but the iPad display would freeze. So I bit the bullet and went and bought myself a 27 inch monitor to put over there. Um, and even though I was trying to keep this wall as clean as possible, you know, I don't mind that little monitor over there. And it's right in front of the treadmill as well. So the benefit of that is that if I want to be on the watt bike and the wife wants to be on the treadmill, we could arguably uh, be doing things simultaneously. And equally, I always used to find that I, pulling the TV across in front of the tre treadmill, it never quite got there. It never quite made it in front of the treadmill. So having that little monitor there right in front of the treadmill is perfect uh, when I want to do a Zwift run or even, you know, just want to get on the treadmill and watch some Netflix or YouTube or something like that. So those are kind of the, the reasons that I bought it. So what I'm, the way that I'm using this is I'm using the Mac Mini M2 as my main Zwift computer. And I've got to be honest, it's worlds apart from the Apple TV. And where I see that is that I'm running it on 1440 here. So you've got 1440 Ultra on your graphics settings on Zwift and you do see the difference. Um, you see the difference, little things like you'll get rider shadows that you didn't on the Apple TV and just the, the motion is a lot more fluid. It's, I guess, if you're a gamer, it's the equivalent of just upgrading your, your graphics card and processor, um, which is effectively what you've done. And what I really like is that um, when I'm streaming, and I have done one live stream and there are more coming, when I'm streaming, um, it runs absolutely beautifully, it runs Zwift absolutely beautifully on the big screen. There's no lag on the little screen. And um, yeah, everything is good with the world. One issue that I did find in my first live stream is that when you buy a 27 inch monitor and you look at it in the Argos catalog, uh, oh, I showing my age, Argos online, um, and you look at your 27 inch monitor you've got on your desktop, you think, yeah, that'll be big enough. And it is until you get on the Watt bike and you're trying to read comments on that. Now there is a way to um, make the comments panel in OBS bigger. And that's what I've done actually. You can just see it sort of poking in at the top there. So you can make the comments panel bigger. So the next live stream I do, I should be able to read what people are saying to me, which will be a bonus. Um, but for me, this is just, this is a bit of a dream setup. And I do consider myself very fortunate. Now let's talk about the Mac Mini itself because it's one of these computers that I, I, I suppose it courts a bit of controversy in the online reviews. And it seems to be a bit of a, um, a bit of a Marmite product in that you either love it or you hate it. And therein is the difference between Apple guys and non-Apple guys, isn't it? Basically, Apple fanboys and non-Apple fanboys. Um, you either love Apple stuff or you absolutely loathe it, I think. And there doesn't seem to be a middle ground. But let me talk about my experiences because you speak as you find. And as I say, for everything I'm doing down here, when I'm running Zwift on ultra settings, and it will actually run on the 4K settings as well, it will run beautifully. And it'll even do um, OBS at the same time without any sort of noticeable lack in quality or any lack of quality that I've noticed. Um, and I, I think that, you know, I was so impressed with this, I thought I'd give it a shot as a video editing rig. Now, I've always used a Windows PC on my desktop. So the move to Apple, even though I've used Apple products before for quite a while, it was a bit of a leap of faith. But, you know, I was quite um, convinced, having seen what it does down here, that it would be a worthy successor to the video editing rig I'd built myself. And I have to say it is. 
The video that you're watching here has been edited on the Mac Mini M2 using Wondershare Filmora. So basically that's the editing software I was using on Windows. I just had to buy a new license because, you know, I've gone to Mac, fair play. It's not a very expensive license anyway. Um, I do find that it does everything I need and in terms of video editing, I don't find any lag or problems with it. What I do find is when you look at the online reviews where people are saying, yeah, no, let's try it for video editing. A lot of those reviews, they'll say, well, I'll just set up a typical setup here. I'll open 20 Chrome tabs and then I'll edit in 4K with nine tracks of video and eight tracks of audio and what have you. And they set up these impossible tests. Now, I might, I'm an amateur, you know, I, I'm not a professional YouTuber. I'm not into video production. I don't do it professionally, so I might be different. Um, but I can't ever see myself leaving more than a couple of Chrome tabs open whilst I'm editing video. And in terms of what I put onto YouTube, well, at the moment, everything that I do is 1080, but I have absolutely total confidence that this thing would edit in 4K as well. So I found no lag and it's, for me, it's perfectly usable as a video editing rig. And the bonus is when you compare the size of my old desktop video editing rig I built myself, which is, is huge, frankly, um, and you compare that with the Mac Mini, you know, the footprint on the desk is amazing. But even better than that, the Mac Mini is so quiet in terms of how it keeps itself cool. If I want to do a voiceover and leave the Mac Mini running, I can. With the old video ed editing rig, there was no chance of that because it always sounded like a 747 taking off. So yeah, for me, a lot of bonuses. So would I recommend it? Yeah, absolutely I'd recommend it. Now I'd say that with a caveat. If you're only buying it to run Zwift, I actually think you'd probably be better served with the Apple TV 4K. You're gonna get in for under 200 quid on that. And you're gonna get a great experience plus the ability to do other things. You know, you can, it's a media streamer. So Netflix, Amazon Prime, um, all of the things that you'd want to watch, you can watch through that. So I'd say that if your only use case for it was to run Zwift, there is a better option. And in my opinion, it would be the Apple TV 4K. However, if like me, you want something that's going to be multi-role or, you know, able to multitask, um, that's going to be able to run Zwift plus do other stuff at the same time, I would say that it's a really solid choice. And even though I had problems with Sidecar on OBS, Sidecar works perfectly with something like Outlook. So if you were, you know, doing a bit of work from home or something like that, and you want to have a Zwift session whilst you're watching your inbox, um, you could just, provided you've got an Apple iPad that, that works with it, that's compatible, you could just set an iPad up on Sidecar and you can watch your inbox there and even work your inbox from there whilst you're doing a Zwift session. So for me, you know, if you've got that multi-use for it, then I think it's absolutely worth the money. I think that in terms of functionality, like I say, I do think a lot of reviewers give it a hard time and I see where they're coming from. And also, you know, I kind of get the whole Apple's just out to make money thing, especially with things like RAM and hard drive, you know, on these later M1 and M2 Mac minis um, and even on the MacBooks, I think from probably around, I think it was something like 2015 onwards. You can't just upgrade the RAM, it's soldered to the board, you know, so once you've, you've picked an eight gig system, you, you're stuck with an eight gig system. And in these later ones, you know, um, if you've picked a 256 hard drive, you're stuck with a 256 hard drive. For me, it doesn't really make an issue. I find the eight gigs of, uh, I think they call it unified memory that you get with these, perfectly adequate for what I do, and that includes video editing and um, multitasking OBS and Zwift down here. And like I go back to Zwift at ultra settings, which I've never run it at before. Another thing I've noticed as well is that 
for my main display here, I'm running the Mac Mini um, just on my JVC Fire TV. Now, I thought when I plugged the Mac Mini into that, I'd get that usual kind of crap quality that you get when you plug a PC into a television. You, you know, because te it's designed to be a television primarily and not a PC. But I've got to say, <laughs> that display is perfectly adequate. Um, yeah, I got no issues with it at all. So yes, I would recommend it, but like I say, that caveat, only recommend it if you've got other uses for it at the same time. It could be, you know, maybe you run Zwift at the moment on a laptop or a desktop um, and you want to replace that, then I think that this would be a really good way to go. Now, of course, you've got to balance this. When you buy a Mac Mini, you do not get a keyboard, you do not get a mouse, trackpad, or display. So these are all things that you have to add on. And I have added um, to my setup here, I bought a Magic Keyboard off of eBay. Um, you'll pick those up, dependent on which eBay seller you use, probably 30 to 40 quid. I added a Magic Mouse as well, probably 30 quid. Um, and I have sort of gone the extra and added a uh, magic trackpad. I think I got that for about 50 quid. So, you know what, there's 130 quid worth of peripherals there already. Plus you've got to have a display to run it on. Um, yeah, if you were running it at close range or didn't want a really big display, something like that 27 inch display that I've got there would be perfectly adequate. I picked that up last weekend from Argos and from memory, I think it was about 150. So, you know, you've probably got a couple of hundred quid to add on to that if you haven't got those things already. But the likelihood is that you may well have those things already. You may already have a Bluetooth keyboard that will connect to it. And I would have thought that most people have some sort of display that will connect to it. So there you go, just my thoughts on the Mac Mini M2 and my Zwift setup here. I'm gonna be talking about uh, another thing that I've added to the pain cave as well. Like I mentioned earlier and in an earlier video, I have added one of these Kicker headwind, um, not Kicker, it's Wahoo, sorry, Wahoo headwind fans. Um, and uh, I love it, I love it. Again, the expensive thing, uh, a, a little bit of, um, a treat to myself and something that I think a lot of people like the Mac Mini would justify the cost of but you know if you can afford it go for it. Anyway I'm going to talk about that in another video so thanks for watching this one YouTube and um, I will see you in the next. Watch out for more live streams, fat bloke trying sprints slowly or riding slowly up a hill whilst talking nonsense. Take care YouTube.